Greetings from Bulgaria, I'm Anton and today I'm here with you for yet another video about Selenium. Let me share my screen. In the last video, we talked about um, signup forms. Check it out. It's a bit long, but I think that it's one of the essential videos that uh, uh, you need to check, especially if you want many examples how to write high quality tests and generate uh, test scenarios. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the Lambda Chess channel. Uh, each week, there are many videos, new videos uploaded. So hit the ring bell so that you get notified uh, about the new videos. And also, you can check uh, the awesome blog where you can find many different out articles really detailed uh, that can help you to level up your skills. So in the previous video, we talked about signup forms. And as I promised, today we are going to talk about, uh, it's like a continuation of, uh, of the subject. And uh, we are going to discuss how we can test emails. Like uh, when you sign up in a form, how you can um, verify those emails, interact with them, uh, or even test for responsiveness, uh, and even execute the emails in the cloud in the browser, and then uh, you know click on links there, etc. Um, in the next video, uh, we are going to talk about handing captures. We are going to talk about uh, cookies and how you can speed up the tests. We're going to talk about how you can write your tests in ment more maintainable way uh, with different weight strategies and design patterns. And of course, we're going to talk about different exceptions, how to uh, avoid them and how to handle them properly and use event listeners. Uh, yeah, in the next video, we're going to talk about handling captures. So stay tuned, hit the ring bell. And now, let's talk about automated testing of emails. Uh, for the job, uh, again, uh, you can download the, uh, the whole source code from our GitHub repo. It's everything is open source, you can play with it, etc. Probably for this particular video, you will have to do a registration in uh, some uh, third party services. Um, again, uh, I'm going to talk about paid services. They have, uh, they have a free tier, trial tier, paid version. Uh, however, uh, the idea of the video is not to market them. We don't have any relationship with these companies. Uh, this is why I'm going to mention a few of these tools. And uh, it's a matter of preference whether to use them or not. Um, so uh, this, uh, for, for the job, um, we, we have this really simple WordPress website where uh, we can do a registration. Uh, and then I'm going to receive an email where uh, I will have a link for verifying my email. And the, when we navigate to this link, uh, a new password will be generated or we can generate a new one, save it, and that's all. Uh, really simple, we need a username and email, uh, that's all. Um, for the job, uh, as I said, there are many, I, I'm going to present to you three of these paid services. Uh, probably there are more. Uh, at least the, the, these are the ones that I uh, found most useful. The one that uh, we are going to use uh, in most of the example uh, examples is Mails Verb. Um, I don't know whether I pronounce it well, but you see the URL. Um, so again, uh, I'm using right now a free version of it. Uh, it's limited to a few emails per month. Uh, the unique thing about this service is that uh, it's actually creating for you an uh, infinite number of unique inboxes and um, also unique emails. Uh, so that you can, you know, every time use the sign up form, um, you know, receive an email, whatever. It's like a real email service. Uh, and 
the benefit of it is that you can access uh, and read all of the emails through an API and through uh, different programming languages. Uh, for example, another such service, it's called testmail.app. And as you can see here, uh, I have this uh, test email where um, you, you just make a simple uh, get request and then um, you will receive all of the emails from, um, you will receive all of the emails uh, from the inbox. And then you can read them, you can parse them, whatever. Uh, I will, I will uh, show you a solution that I used uh, this client as well. It's, uh, it has a little bit less features compared to uh, Mail Swerp. Uh, another popular uh, tool is called MailTrap. Uh, as you can see, they have many SDKs, C Sharp, Perl, Java, Node.js, PHP, Python, Ruby, etc. Is the same idea. You can create different inboxes, interact with emails, you can send emails. Uh, some of these services actually can uh, verify calls and SMS as well. Um, however, for uh, the purposes of our QA activities, uh, usually we need only unique emails and a service where uh, we can we can read them. Um, also uh, about mail swerp, uh, I, I really like it because they have many different articles and especially about integrating it with Selenium uh, using different uh, programming languages, etc. The other are a little bit uh, have less resources about it. And then um, some I, I noticed that some of the articles and the documentation is actually a little bit outdated. But anyhow, it's not really big of a deal. Uh, for the Java, uh, as you can see from the Maven setup, we need this dependency uh, and that you need uh, to install their JDK uh, SDK. Um, the problem with MailTrap was that I tried to uh, integrate it. However, um, Really, it was a little bit uh, more cold and it was uh, a little bit more complex. The simplest of them all, however, they don't have an SDK is, as you will see, this test mail app. However, um, to, to use mail swap is really, really, really simple, as you will see. Uh, actually, it's really simple uh, to make it work. When, when you do... Um, the free registration, uh, you will receive this API key. It's just a long string that you can put in your... For now, we're going to keep it as a constant here in your code, but probably you want to put it in an environment overable and not committed to source control. Uh, and uh, usually, Again, there is an API to create inboxes. Maybe here we'll find it, yeah. Inbox controller API. Um, again, this here is a little bit outdated. In a minute, we are going to write the code. Uh, but this will create a unique inbox with unique email. Um, during the trial and in the free period, uh, actually, you cannot create emails with your own domain. This is a paid feature. For the free tier, they will just generate uh, uh, emails with their domain, which is fine for our purposes. And as you can see later, when we have the inbox, we can get the email address. This is how we are going to uh, register to this website here. And then uh, later, there is another API controller called uh, Wait for Controller API. Uh, that we just passed the uh, mail swap client, and uh, we can wait for the latest email. Of course, um, they have different uh, methods here uh, in this controller API. Um, it depends whether you execute your test in parallel or not, and uh, whether you're going to use a single inbox or 
many inboxes. For our purposes, we are going to uh, run them sequentially. So I don't care. We will just get the latest email, right? Otherwise, if you have many parallel threads, there will be pro probably problems because you are not sure whether uh, this day is generated the latest email or another. So you need to be careful. And then when we have the email, we can get the body, get the sender, the subject, we can verify it, we can parse it, we can interact with it. In, in the second part of the video uh, and uh, in this module, I'm going to show you how actually when we extract the HTML body of the email, we can write it to a local file and then we can open the local file in our browser and then we can interact with it with WebDriver. And this is how we can test how or whether our email is okay or not, because this is actually like a mini web page. This is the email and it will be rendered differently on different browsers uh, and on different screens. So this is something that we need to test. And actually many of the uh, popular uh, mail sending platforms, they have this feature to test your responsiveness of your emails. However, if you have many emails, uh, this is a manual job and it's something that we can automate, of course. Uh, so let's get started. Um, in our project, as I said, uh, we can, we can uh, here in chapter 13, email testing, I created this uh, email inboxes tests. Of course, we Every time we download the Chrome driver with WebDriver Manager, we start Chrome. And uh, as I said, uh, we need a few things that I uh, actually, let me again uh, discuss the documentation. Uh, so uh, one of the resources is here, uh, this article about receiving emails in Java Selenium tests. Another is you, if you open the Java docs, Inbox controller here, they have nice examples uh, because as you will notice, uh, even in the article, they provided no uh, everywhere for the parameters, but actually this wasn't working. And as you can see, we have here email addresses, tags, name, description, use domain pool, favorite, and um, at least from the article, uh, you don't know what this stuff are. Uh, so, Basically, my code will be based on this documentation, so you can check it out. Also, there is, uh, as you can see, there are different languages here, depending on uh, what language do you use. And as you can see here, for the weight for controller API, there are different uh, match options that you can use uh, to, to match to a subject, whether uh, the body contains something or not, or you can do it yourself, of course and they use this wait for matching email. But uh, for our purposes, um, probably we will just uh, use the get latest email. And uh, later, uh, in order to simulate more easily the um, interaction, we'll use another example. So let's get started. Uh, again, here for this simple page, if we inspect, you will see that we, we can get the username by this uh, user underscore login. The email, we can get it by this user underscore email. When we fill the information here, we can click on the register button, which has this VP slash submit uh, register. For the reset, nothing more. I will just click this generate password again. We can get it by text when we write an expat, like, uh, for example, slash slash button uh, square brackets. You can check the uh, my JUnit videos uh, on the Lambda Test channel. There is a really nice uh, videos where I explain these complex uh, expats. Also, there is another series called for Selenium 4 where uh, there is a dedicated video about the new relative locators in Selenium 4, where I compare them to these expat expressions that are favorite to me. Uh, I, I still prefer to write expat, so uh, I think it's much better. 
compared to this relative locators, but if you prefer them, it, it's completely fine. Generate password. And here it is, this button, the same. We'll find the safe password, we'll click it, and that's all. Uh, again, we, we will get this um, URL from the email that we are going to receive. So we need to write the logic to um, wait for this latest email and verify it. Again, in the beginning, I will put everything in the tests and then later on, we're going to um, create a specialized class for that. So let's do that. First, uh, we need here on top, we need this API client configuration, get default API client. From the documentation, this gives us, uh, as I said, the uh, default client that uh, we need to provide to all of the different uh, API controllers. Then in order to create an inbox, we need this inbox controller API. And then we need um, a key. This is the key for my uh, free account. Uh, you don't try it, it will be expired. Uh, when we, we start the video, so you need another. Yeah, then we need a timeout. And then again, uh, I'm going to create a static constructor because this is static to initialize uh, the different timeouts because they are static. So here we create, uh, we have a connection timeout, right timeout, three timeout, these timeouts can be different in milliseconds or seconds, as you wish. Uh, then we initialize the default client, so probably we don't need this part here. Um, and we set all of these timeouts. Uh, and here we set the HTTP client, we initialize the API key, and we initialize the inbox controller that accepts the default client. Uh, this is about it. Then um, we can create a few private methods, uh, or actually, we, we can um, actually we can put this logic for now. We can we can move it to to uh, to the setup class. That's fine. Later uh, we, we can have the static constructor. So we can put it here. And then in the user create when validate email. Uh, as you'll notice, we use our user factory. If you watch the previous video about the signup forms, I will just quickly remind you what we have. Under the models folder, again, uh, in, under main Java, I put all the classes that are not tests actually, but here we put the page objects, the models. The models are just the representation. We can use these model classes for um, providing them as a parameters of methods instead of having 10 parameters, right? We, we can group it. Also, when we are talking about APIs, such as creating inboxes, um, we use these model classes to deserialize them and serialize them uh, back and forth to JSON when we submit them through the wire. Uh, and we have this user class that groups the information about the users, which is first name, uh, username, last name, email, phone, password, password confirm, etc. We use those in the signup form. Uh, and then we have this factory class, factories from the name. It we use factories. There are a bunch of design patterns that use this word, but the simplest version is just to have one method for creating the data or initializing an object. So here I use a library called Faker. It's popular library in Java. Uh, we have in the POM XML uh, dependency to it. Again, you can watch the previous video. And uh, basically it generates random data uh, that it's readable in order to, and here we call the setters to initialize the users. Just for the email right here, we use the timestamp builder, which is uh, one utility under the utilities uh, package, where basically this is a helper class 
the utility class that um, builds a unique text based on a timestamp, like year, month, date, hour, seconds, milliseconds. And it, it can add it uh, as a prefix or suffix to a particular text to make it unique. I prefer this over GUIDs that are just random text that it's every time it's unique, it's guaranteed. However, when you use timestamps, uh, especially if you don't delete the data, uh, it's much more usable for troubleshooting later uh, the failing tests or uh, while debugging, right? So in the user factory, we use it here to set the email. That's all. So first we initialize the user um, and then um, again from the documentation that I showed you, let, let's check it out again. Um, we basically need this API or inbox uh, controller, create inbox, and we need to provide all of this information here. So I already did that and I'm going to explain it to you uh, one by one. So uh, IntelliJ is really awesome and you can see the names of the parameters. First, we don't supply an email address. It will be generated by the inbox. As I said, uh, if you use the free tier, it will to generate uh, an email with their own domain. Uh, if you use the paid version, it will, uh, you can register your own domain, but you need to verify it. Um, then if we hover, you will see that we can provide tags. For now, we don't need them. Um, here, I provided the first name uh, for the username of the email uh, for the inbox. Then we have description. And we say use domain pool, uh, which is basically the thing that I mentioned that it's going to use their um, domain. That's all. It's not favorite. Uh, it won't expire. Uh, uh, expires. Uh, you, you, you can set here uh, an exact date. Uh, here, I, I just uh, mentioned milliseconds in which the inbox will be expired. Uh, you don't need a team access. Then, there are different inbox types. I choose HTTP and it's not virtual inbox. After that, it's in a matter of seconds, it will uh, generate the inbox for you. Then we can get the email address like this, inbox get email address. Then we need to uh, call the, set, uh, the setter of the user that we generated and it will set the unique email. Then, uh, we need to navigate to our registration uh, website, which is uh, this dummy, uh, dummy uh, WordPress website. Uh, I already explained how we uh, found these elements, like user, the email, the submit button, right? So we just basically type uh, the first name, that, then the email that was generated previously from the inbox, and we click Submit. That's all for now. And if we um, get back to our example here, uh, as we said, and if you, if you check here the uh, receive confirmation email part of the block, you will see that we need to initialize this wait for controller API. Again, we just need to provide the default client and we need to call this wait for let's email. Since this is outdated, there are a few additional parameters that we need to um, that we need to add. But let's first add the wait for email controller. Here it is, we provide the default client and then here uh, is the line. As you see, we need this current time, which is actually since. Since means um, you need to provide a date from which it will return all the emails. Uh, in order to generate that, uh, since if we uh, navigate to it, uh, if we decompile it, this is the decompiled version. If you press Control and click, you will see that we have this uh, offset date time since. Uh, and if you hover, 
uh, it says filter for emails that were received after the given timestamp, optional. Anyhow, we can initialize here. This is the since time, offset date time of instant, instant now. This is the current date time, and we provide the current uh, time zone system default. That's for me. You need to be careful depending on where you execute the tests and where is the server and all that. So we provide it here. Um, I say that I want all the emails, not only the unread ones. I provide the time, uh, timeout. I provide the ID of the inbox. We don't sort them. This is why we provide no. Um, by the way, it said that it's optional, but if both uh, before and since are no, actually it was failing. This is why we need the current time. And then we have this delay. That's all. Uh, and then we will receive uh, the latest email. Uh, however, if we, <laughs> uh, especially for this dummy website, it's returning uh, the email not uh, in HTML format, but in text format. And uh, actually there, uh, there are a bunch of lines, but I guess let's, uh, debug it and now explain this code here why we need it. So let's debug it. We need just a little bit time to uh, compile it and parse it. So it's running, wait for it, wait for it. We start the Chrome. Actually, we forgot to navigate to the page, I think. No, we are navigating. What is the problem? It's not really clear. Let's debug it again. Oh, maybe my API key was wrong. Uh, yeah, this is the problem. I, I uh, copied the new one. So let me just uh, supply the correct one. Yeah, you need to be careful. As I said, I just don't want to hard code it. In, in the examples and on GitHub, you will find just the dummy, dummy key and you need to provide the right one. That's all. Um, and here we have the email. This is what we received. As you can see, we have this long email with mail swerp.world domain. Uh, and if we continue, uh, again, we'll, as you'll see, we'll navigate to the website. We fill the email and, uh, and as you can see, we have here registration complete. And then we wait for the email. It takes a bit depending on how much time we need to wait for the ML. And here it is. And if when we debug it here, uh, you can see the inbox API. And here we have the ML. When we have the ML, uh, we can view it. This is the inbox. Uh, actually, here is the received email. And then you see the user, the ID, the sender. Uh, recipients, reply to, and then we have the body. And as you can see, the body, it's not really uh, an HTML, right? It's just a plain text. This is fine. It's just not pretty. But the email body, uh, as you'll see in the many modern uh, email marketing, it's actually a full wall uh, HTML with CSS and sometimes JavaScript. 
Uh, so we need to get this email and this is the thing that I'm doing, uh, this URL. Basically, the thing that I do is that I parse all the lines and then I just locate and get the first line that has this login equal. That's all. Uh, so I will stop debugging now. So this is what I'm doing here. First, I'm converting the body. First, I split it by the current system wine separator, which is the new wine. Um, converted it to a stream. Then I filtered it and I get the line which contains login equals. I use the stream API. Uh, and then I say find first and get it. That's all. This is how I get the URL. Once I have it, uh, as I said, we can navigate to it. Here we just get the URL. You can trim it if you want. Then uh, I already explained how I got the uh, generate pass button, right? By XPath. Uh, and then we just click the two buttons. That's all. We click it, we save it. That's all of it. Now, uh, if we want to interact with the ML, as I explained, uh, here, I cannot show you with this particular website because it's not generating a real HTML body of the email. However, um, in order to, to make it prettier, I found um, a few templates for uh, nice emails. I just generated the dummy one. And this is the email body. I just uh, saved uh, this to our resources here. This is uh, the HTML email body. And we are going to use the same service, uh, the mail swap, to send the email to the inbox and then we will get it. Um, so my body here, this is the, the email that we are going to receive. When you click uh, my account, it will, as you can see at the bottom left, it will navigate to account slam test slash login. And we'll just verify that we are on the correct page. Uh, in order to uh, uh, load this, um, again, I just uh, check the Java documentation about the SDK, and uh, I checked how we can send an email. So here, uh, we are going to create uh, this send email. Uh, method. It's just static method that receives the inbox and the email to which we want to send uh, the actual email. It throws API exception. Um, and in order to uh, read the body, again, because we need it as a string, as an HTML, I built this utility. It's called resources reader. It's basically reading uh, the resources uh, of the current um, uh, Java, uh, Java module, um, and we get it, uh, get this file as a string. We just need to provide the class for um, in which uh, this is embedded, this resource, the file name, and there is a dedicated method uh, of the class class, which is a weird name in Java, but that's all. Uh, that it's called get resource as a stream, and we convert it as, uh, in UTF-8 encoding, and we return it. In order this to work, IoT, uh, IO utils, you need uh, these two packages, Apache commons and commons IO. Um, and then when we have the ML body, which is basically this HTML here, again, I just copy pasted it from a free email templates and just changed the URL so that we can interact with it. Uh, so we are sending the email to the same inbox that we are going to generate. Um, and then we want, by the way, if you don't want uh, this to be thrown, I'm using um, another uh, cool add-on to IntelliJ that it's a really popular um, Java project. It's called Wombok. Uh, 
And this Wombo gives us this annotation called sneaky throws, which will swallow the exception that we throw. And we don't need everywhere to put this uh, throw clauses. And this is especially useful for utility methods uh, and classes like this. Um, so we need one more method. When we receive the body, uh, when, when you receive it, we need to read the body uh, of the ML. Then, as I said, we want to save it to, to a local file, maybe in the temp folder. And then we will load this file uh, in WebDriver and we can start interacting with it. To do so, uh, we need two methods. Let me explain them. The first one is called Vault Email Body. So we provide the body and the driver. In the body, we replace the uh, new lines and some of the slashes. Basically, we're doing custom escaping. Then I'm generating a new unique uh, file name. Probably you don't need it even because we do that in the uh, right string to temp file method here. So I provide the file content. Basically, this is the HTML body, right? Um, and then again, we, we can use again sneaky trolls here. It's completely fine. Uh, so we use this um, class files that has this static method called create temp file. We, we just mentioned that we want it with the .html uh, extension. And then we use the try uh, statement to um, initialize the buffer writer and then file writer, and it will write the content to a temp file. And then we are going to close it because basically the buffer writer and file writer are implementing the closable interface. And then we say temp file to file and it will return the file. Basically, we are just you know saving a temp file in the temp folder of Windows or whatever operating system you use. That's all. Once we have the file and it's there in, in the temp folder, if you're running locally, uh, it's easy. You just say file to path to URI to string, and this will convert it to this special syntax. Uh, you know, when, when you open um, local files, it, it says file to dot slash slash name of uh, path to the file, and it will load it. Um, it will load it uh, here uh, like this, and then we can start interacting with it. In case um, we will, uh, when we talk about uh, cloud execution for lambda test, for example, it's simple. Again, you need the, the same code about uh, interaction with emails and uh, with these third party services. Uh, we, we have the normal uh, Lambda test code where we have the, we read the username from uh, environmental variables, the authentication key, uh, mentioning the browser name, operating system versions, all of that. Then we have the initialization code. Basically, you need the, the same code. However, since this is a local file, uh, you need something additional. And this additional thing is actually here, this uh, Lambda test tunnel, where, um, let me find where uh, I have it somewhere here. Basically there, you need to, uh, let me hold my screen. Uh, let me go to the dashboard. So here it is. Uh, at the top right, you have configure tunnel. When you click on it, uh, you have all of the keys. Uh, and uh, the, there is basically uh, just let me just cut some of the information. So here it is. Basically, you need to download the Wanda test tunnel. Then you need to provide your username, your key. And then when you say 
uh, directory and uh, this directory, then there is a special URL called local slash folder dot lambda test dot com your file name, and you will be able to browse your local file through the tunnel inside the lambda test platform, which is really awesome. Uh, this is why here, um, when we say interact uh, with email body, um, basically uh, in, in the world email body, if you are navigating to a local file, you just say file to path to unit to string. If you need to execute your tests on Lambda test, you can navigate to this local slash folder dot Lambda test dot com file name. This is actually something that we do on a daily basis in one of our enterprise projects because we need to interact with such emails and it's working perfectly. And this is how you can uh, test for responsiveness because as I mentioned, and uh, you need to test your emails on different browsers. This is essential. Um, so uh, later, um, Let me copy the rest of the... So uh, here with interactive the body, we again, uh, the first part, part is repeating. We, we create the inbox, we set the email address, uh, we set it here with the setter. Then we call the send email method to send it again. Um, ultimately, actually, your website will send the email. I just don't have such an example to, to send such dummy beautiful email that we can interact with it. Then we need, uh, again, the uh, wait, wait for controller API. Here we wait for, um, for the latest email. Then we call uh, world email body like this. Again, when we call wait for email body, it will save the file uh, to a dummy file uh, in our temp folder. Then we'll navigate to this local file and we can start interacting with it. Uh, and this is why after that, again, we can use the driver to locate the my account link uh, on in the email. We can click it and then when we click it, uh, we initialize WebDriver wait for 30 seconds and we wait the URL to be accountslambdatest.com login. Uh, as I said, uh, there are different uh, services. It's not only uh, mail swap. Uh, for example, for this test email app, actually this was the first one that I researched. It's really simple. Uh, basically, if you check their documentation, uh, you just need the namespace dot tag. This tag is something that you provide. It's similar to Gmail aliases that we use with the plus sign. Uh, and a new email will be generated for you. So this is another trick that you can use. Actually, if you register a Gmail account, you can log in into Google Console, and then you can set up uh, the Google API for accessing Gmail, and you can use it. And you can, uh, I, ha I haven't found really an API useful to generate different aliases, but I guess you can filter later, and that's completely fine. This is another thing that you can use, another approach. Um, and then, uh, they have, again, nice documentation about the different uh, query parameters that they use and the different headers, etc. It's nice. Uh, this is why I uh, abstracted the logic in this uh, MailSwerp service. Uh, we have the default plan, the inbox, the API key. Again, this is usually something that you put in environmental variables or in a uh, on, uh, or in another uh, secure way. Uh, in the static constructor, uh, we initialize the timeouts, and then I moved with sneaky trolls uh, the different methods, create inbox, wait for uh, latest email. As you can see, it's th this 
is much shorter compared to all of the parameters that we don't set. Then we have the send email. It's basically something like a big facade for uh, for this, right? Uh, so you, you can choose the name facade. This is another design pattern. And then we have the vault email body uh, and a uh, writing string to temp file. Uh, and again, we, we have the same facade for uh, test mail service. However, here uh, again, we have the vault email body uh, and everything here. Just uh, I use rest assure and I installed um, uh, the dependency in the POM XML uh, to make um, with query params uh, the get request to access uh, all of the um, all of the uh, emails in the inbox. Uh, I just got the JSON uh, from their documentation or directly testing it uh, as I uh, showed you in the browser. And um, for example, here I used an extension, uh, which here from new I can say. Uh, let me find it. Generate module from JSON. This is extension from IntelliJ, where when I click it, I can say one bulk, Jackson, JSON. I can provide the JSON here and it will generate all of the model classes here. Uh, in, in this case, it generated these four classes with the serialized name annotation, uh, which allows you to have different names uh, of the Java fields and the things that are going to be serialized or deserialized in the JSON. And here we have these email items where later uh, in the facade, we, we, we can filter them using the stream API uh, to contain the inbox name or particular subjects or whatever, and then we, we can return them. As you can see here, I, I have um, sorted them, uh, etc., to get the latest one. You can do that if you wish, but as I said, um, the other, the, the first one that we discussed is much nicer because the SDK is full fledged SDK working with everything instead of writing uh, all of these requests ourselves. I think we are ready. So next time, we're going to talk about handling captures. Uh, please, uh, if you have comments, uh, put them below or questions in the comment section. If you wish uh, to record and uh, hear about something else more interesting and a problem, just mention it in the comments. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that it was useful to you. Check again the Lamp Test blog and uh, the video channel on YouTube. Um, and you can get your certification, pre-certification for land this about JUnit and Selenium. Uh, and you can link it to your LinkedIn. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.